idea of spreads. So we are going to study a couple of ideas, one which we call as a Z spread and second is a OAS or what we call as an option adjusted spread. So related concepts, let's begin with the Z spread first. Now this is also a static spread because it's like a fixed spread which we are trying to calculate. Now the idea is the Z spread is defined as that spread which is going to equate the model price versus the market price for an MBS product or for MBS security. So we can imagine that we are trying to uh, solve for an equation which is going to equate a model price with the market price. How that happens, uh, we'll see through a series of simple steps. Now for this, we require a, a spot rate curve. So we'll use a treasury spot rate curve, which we also call as a proxy for the risk-free rates. Uh, so a treasury term structure is assumed as a RFR curve. So a risk-free curve. Now let M be the market price of the MBS security, that is the price at which it is transacting in the market. Now in order to estimate this, uh, we are going to use a, a variable called as K and we are going to use it in our calculation to calculate the Z spread. That is, we are trying to answer a question that what is that fixed value of K which needs to be added in the calculation such that the model price will equal the market price for the MBS security. Now, we know that MBS is a risky product, right? So this spread will always exist. We can't simply discount the cash flow at the RFR. So that's what we precisely show here. So the adjusted spot rate curve, which we call as S risky, which is S0 plus K, S1 plus K and so on. So we are adding a constant value of K. Now, our K is nothing but the Z spread which we are looking at. So we use a simple goal seek feature. So most of us are familiar with the goal seek feature which is there in Excel. Or in case those of you who use scripting tools like Python, we can do that via a SciPy as well, which we call as a scientific Python. So that helps us solve such equations. So we have the value of M, which is the current price, and we have the equation on the right hand side, and we are trying to solve for K. Now, by doing a simple root finding scheme, we can uh, estimate what is this value of K, and this is what we call as the Z spread. So in other words, Z spread is defined as a constant spread, which will have to be added to every single point on the spot rate curve so that the market value and the model price of the MBS security tally. So imagine that this is my interest rate term structure. So I am trying to estimate how much spread I need to add on top of this. So you can imagine this is like the value of K, which we have just calculated. And this is what we call as the adjusted spot rate curve for the risk which is embedded in the, in the MBS product. And this will help us estimate uh, what the Z spread is. So this is the same definition which I just mentioned. Now, the now one drawback which we can see for the Z spread is that this is like a constant or a static spread which is being added on top of uh, the treasury spot rate curve. Now, now, the drawback here is it fails to capture the prepayment option which is embedded because we are assuming a single cash flow vector. So that way, this is like a shortcoming, you can imagine. So uh, so that way, uh, I mean, Z-Spread is unable to capture the interest rate volatility portion which is observed in the market. Again, an important part, isn't it? Because interest rate volatility will have a bearing as to the way in which uh, the prepayment option is going to be exercised by borrowers. And we know that prepayment is a very important feature whenever we are doing any kind of modeling for MBS type of securities. So because Z spread is unable to capture rates volatility, this can be like a drawback in the model. Now, therefore, as an enhancement for the Z spread, there is another spread which we call as an OS or an option adjusted spread. So let's try to understand what an OAS or an option adjusted spread does for us. Now the OAS is something which we try to imply through simulation. So that way we are trying to do an enhancement on top of the static spread which we use for the Z spread logic. That is here we are trying to use a simulation in order to compute with a computer spread which will help us reconcile the PVs or DC, DCF based model price with the market price of the security and additionally, we are also trying to account for the embedded option. And the embedded option here is the exact prepayment option which we have which we have discussed earlier. 
So a simple relation which relates Z spread with OS, we have Z spread is the option adjusted spread plus the option cost. And this option cost talks about the prepayment option. We can simply rearrange this equation and we can calculate the option cost as well. So maybe there can be a simple question on the exam which may ask candidates to calculate either a Z spread or option cost based on the information given. So that way this relation can be uh, can come very handy. And that way you need not mug up this relation. Now it's uh, very, very logical because we know that for Z spread there is a shortcoming. We are unable to capture the interstate volatility. That's why we are unable to uh, capture the impact of prepayment option or the embedded option. So what we do is on OS, we are making that adjustment or enhancement. So that's why we say Z spread is OS plus the option cost. Now, there are uh, there are a couple of advantages around OS as well, especially from a trading perspective. So traders who are active in the MBS uh, side of the market, that they would want to use OS as an indicator in order to figure out which securities are mispriced. That is, they are trying to uh, figure out which are underpriced or overpriced securities because they may want to take a certain trading decision based on this. Now, let's take a simple example. Let's say a long-term OAS spread for a certain category historically was 200 bips. Let's say now the current spread is 150 bips. Now, we see there is a difference. Now, the long-term uh, spread was 50 bips higher as compared to what it is now. Now, this may give a valuable signal to a trader and the trader might want to take a certain trading decision based on this analysis because there may be expectation that the current OAS spread might revert to the long term, a long term average value. So based on that, uh, a certain trading strategy might be devised. A few more points which are specific to OAS. So maybe talking of the difficulties which OAS spreads uh, uh, exposes the market participants to. So yes, on the face of it, OAS happens to, happens to be a very, very superior or a very, very robust technique of uh, using in our computations. However, there are a few challenges which needs to be overcome in order to make the best use of uh, this measure, especially from a modeling point of view. Now, firstly, OAS is derived from a Monte Carlo simulation. Now, we know that any Monte Carlo engine is based on a certain set of assumptions. Now, every modeler would want to keep the number of assumptions to the minimum because that's the idea of parsimonious models. We always try to keep a minimum number of observations and we try to keep the variables in check so that it doesn't impact the model uh, performance too much. So firstly, and since it's based on simulation, there is a considerable amount of model risk. Next is the Monte Carlo simulation is again a function of two important ideas, something which we spoke of earlier as well when we spoke of valuation of the MBS product. One is the correct choice of the interest rate model. So whether I go in for a short rate model, maybe like a Hull White or maybe I go in for a model like probably a LIBOR market model or a Heath Jarrow model, AJM model as we call it. So based on whether I go in for the short rate or not, that will have an impact on the analysis. Also, the kind of volatility parameter which gets used in the model will have a final impact. So again, these two are a couple of things which need to be uh, reviewed carefully. Now, model assumptions are going to impact the value of OAS spread naturally because OAS is something which we try to derive through simulations. So uh, it's it will be exposed to any kind of model risk as well. Also, now th this was from a modeling point of view. Now, there can be a few challenges when we come to interpreting the OS spread. Now, uh, firstly, there can be difficulty in differentiating securities which are actually mispriced or certain securities which may be trading at a premium or uh, at a discount based on the uh, based on the current market scenario. So again, differentiating this can be a bit of a challenge. So uh, that is something which uh, which will be based on the trader's expertise, I would say, because finally a trader would have to make a certain decision based on the OAS spread. Uh, now, because of this, it brings us to point B, whereby we talk of relative value comparison. Because we have multiple categories of MBS products which are available in the, uh, in the market, which a trader might want to take a position in. And the trader may feel that before he or she makes a decision, they may want to do a certain relative value comparison across securities. Now, if that is the case, uh, again, uh, OS can be useful, but that is something which has to be used carefully 
because that way interpreting the OS in this scenario also gets a little challenging. And when we talk of comparing securities or maybe selecting mispriced securities, our OS cannot be the only factor. So yes, OS is definitely one important factor, but along with this, there need to be other factors which are considered as well. So maybe in a uh, in a large scale or or uh, 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 or out and out trading model along with OAS other factors which impact security prices that is like the market sentiment external market factors uh, uh, all of these are going to have impact on the way in which uh, the securities market is going to behave so that's why uh, maybe uh, just using OAS is not enough so along with OAS it needs to be enhanced with other measures so that a trader would be in a much much better position in order to estimate uh, as to how to evaluate a security based on this particular measure. So these are the two spreads which are frequently used by market participants, the Z spread and the OAS spread. Again, something which is popularly tested on the examination as well as something which you will find relevant in your uh, respective projects as well.